uh, welcome to this video uh, before I start uh, just want to tell you that a lot of dogs are barking uh, outside so don't mind them uh, I'm recording this video pretty late at night uh, nevertheless so this session is about uh, solving guesstimate problems uh, as you see that guesstimate problems are becoming extremely popular uh, in, in modern interviews right you might expect them if you're applying for consulting jobs product managers growth managers or growth analyst or for the, or any type of analyst job for that matter uh, one thing that you should know about these questions is that um, uh, the interviewer is not actually expecting you to give the right answer uh, he's not he's not concerned um, uh, how accurate you are he's only focusing uh, on your approach so while while obviously you want to be as accurate as possible you also have to make sure that uh, whatever assumptions you are taking must have a logical reason and you should present the same to the to the interviewer also uh, whatever data that you're assuming uh, whatever numbers that you're assuming you should um, give logical reason for that and make sure that you are uh, crisply conveying the same to the interviewer so i'll be discussing one of the problems that i faced um, when i was giving an interview um, with uh, with one of the companies and what was my approach now obviously my approach might differ from your approach right it, there's no right or wrong answer uh, in such type of questions uh, but yes um, if you have a different approach to this particular question please do mention in the comments uh, i would love to uh, read that uh, so in this uh, uh, session I'll, I'll first describe what is my approach how to how to approach this type of questions and then uh, uh, I'll also take an example on how you can solve such type of questions. Okay. So this is a four-step approach um, that I use. So the first is clarify the problem. Now this is this is very common, right? Um, uh, because guesstimate problems sometimes can be very vague, and it is always uh, advisable to uh, you know uh, clarify whatever doubts you might have. For example, um, you know there's one very popular question. Uh, that I, that pops up in every alternate interview wherein uh, you know uh, they might ask you how can you tell the number of flight that departs from delhi every day now this is a very vague question right because uh, you, know, you don't know which type of flight is you talking about is it talking about the cargo flight or passenger flight is it talking about uh, national local flight or international flight or is it talking about uh, from Delhi, uh, from uh, Indira Gandhi Airport, Sadar Jagman. So uh, there can be uh, many clarifications, many doubts that you might have. It's better to clarify all of them before, just uh, rather than assuming something. Uh, so this is why once you clarify, like for example, if it's clarified, suppose you're only concerned about IGI Airport, you're uh, you're only concerned about uh, passenger flight and only local flights. So now it's crystal clear, right? What you have to do. Second and the most important. Uh, step is to break down the problem now there can be two ways you can solve the problem first is top down or bottom up uh, top down is uh, something like uh, you know you have to assume the population of, of, a, of a city of a country and then you break down the population into for example you might have to break down the population into age into gender um, into income groups uh, into professions so once you break it down, then you'll have to solve for that particular part. For example, if you break down in the income groups and your target audience uh, is someone who's using the, uh, let's suppose, men's fairness cream and they fall uh, uh, from segment 20 years to 65 years old, right? So that's your target audience. So otherwise, you also you might want to break down, uh, for example, men's grooming products, right? Then you will also only focus on the men, uh, uh, men segment. You don't have to focus on the women's so this is why you have to break it down and this is where top down this is where top down approach helps you second is bottom up now bottom up comes when you know they might ask you questions about the revenue how much revenue is being earned from one of the stores uh, so that's where bottom so you might have to assume uh, the revenue per head from one of the customers and then you try to find the footfall in, in the store and then eventually multiply it so the first thing that you should do whenever you get a problem is to just find out if you're going to use top down or bottom up approach once that gets in your head that okay i'm going to use top down approach you know the, the solution starts just brewing in your head so third is simple you have to solve piece by piece once you get it down once you find out if it's a top down bottom up for example if it's a top down you'll have to just break it into certain parts for example if it's a top down break it into different segments find out which segments 
uh, is is actually suited in your if it's a very high end product probably income group model if it's a gender specific product gender group if it's age specific product then you have to break it down age another example if it's a bottom up approach for example you want to find out the revenue of certain audience of certain target audience you have to break it down um, on that parameter then so, uh, last is consolidate once you have all the pieces you have solved all the pieces you just have to consolidate and give the right answer so this is uh, one question that i uh, encountered in one of my interviews and he asked me to find out how much money a burger king outlet makes per day in delhi so now this can also be very vague question right i, I had to clarify is he talking about any specific burger because probably a burger in a connaught place might earn more than a burger in north delhi uh or a uh, burger uh, a burger king outlet on a weekend might earn more than a burger king outlet on weekday so i had to clarify if he's talking about a specific day or any specific outlet lucky for me um, uh, he wanted to be very generic so i he yeah, he may he i i asked him that if i can assume um, uh, that the uh, flow in the out and in the store is probably same is is not does not have a weekend factor or uh, every burger king outlet uh, in delhi probably earns very same way so uh, finally uh, i i clarified the problem now to break it down now obviously top down will not help here because um, he has is asking me the revenue so i cannot just start from the top i'll have to go from the bottom so i have to assume the revenue uh, per person per customer so i thought that uh, assume that the revenue per person can should be 200 rupees every person in the uh, now someone might spend 100 rupees and the other some might spend 300 rupees so on the average i thought uh, 200 is a very reasonable assumption to take uh, where in a burger king outlet people must be spending that and uh, the next thing what i what you can do in such a question is uh, you know in in pay uh, in questions like where you have to assume um, you know the purchasing power of a customer is the time period now obviously burger king outlet or for that matter any outlet uh, will not have a very uh, you know uniform flow of customers uh, uh, so i had to break it down i had to break the day uh, into different segments the segments were um, a high flow and low flow now high flow wherein i can expect a high number of customers coming into my store low flow wherein low number of customers would come to my store now Uh, i assumed uh, that the store should open at 10 am and will close down at 10 pm that's 12 hour window that i have now obviously now this is a food item so 10 to 12 i assume will be a low flow because uh, you know that's that's uh, uh, that's not a lunch time nobody eats burger so early in the morning so assume that 10 to 12 is a very low flow however 12 to 4 that's 4 hour window is is i assume should be a high flow because it's lunch time people must be going out to eat another 4 to 6 i assume would be a low flow and then 6 to 12 which is probably dinner time as a high flow so <clears throat> that's one assumption that i took second assumption you can second assumption that you have to take is the number of counters that a burger king outlet might have because that's where people will spend money so uh, on an average if you have would have been any burger king at all so there are 3 to 4 outlets uh So assumed that there are three outlets wherein three cashiers are standing and they can uh, uh, people can go and buy the burgers from there. Now, um, other assumption that I had to take was how much time does one customer spend um, to complete this whole purchasing cycle. Now, obviously, uh, someone would come at the uh, at the counter, look at the menu, decide what to eat, and then eventually place an order. Then uh, you know uh, he would pay the money. There would be invoice would be generated, and that's that's a whole process. I assume that uh, it should take around three minutes for one complete order to take place. Uh, so there were three counters. I assume that uh, during heavy flow, one assumption that I had is what is the maximum amount of money that I can earn during a heavy flow. now heavy flow uh, is where all the three counters are busy and uh, it takes 3 minutes to uh, place one order so in 3 minutes i'll be placing one order from one of the counters but simultaneously all the three counters are busy so in 3 minutes total in total i'll be getting three orders right so in 60 minutes i'll be getting 60 orders right and the order average order price is 200 rupees so in one hour in the heavy flow period i'm getting 12000 rupees right 60 into 200 but that's a 4 hour window so 
in four hours i'm earning 48000 rupees during that heavy flow right so 12 to 4 i'm earning 40 48000 rupees i'm assuming the that's the maximum amount of money that i can earn right i'm also i'm assuming two things one uh, all my three counters are busy two there is no time wastage between the first order though there would be but i'm assuming that there wouldn't be uh, because there's a long queue as soon as one person places the order he gets out the other person jumps in right so there is absolutely no time wastage that's that's the maximum amount of order that can happen which is 48000 rupees in that 4 hour window right uh, assuming the same um, uh, thing to happen in the second um, maximum which is 6 to 12 which is 6 to 10 uh, and i'm getting another 48000 rupees so in the max during the maximum window i'm getting 96000 worth of order okay that's one assumption that i've taken Coming to the low uh, uh, low flow period, which is two hours period. So first is ten to twelve. Now I'm assuming uh, uh, same three hours. It would take around three minutes uh, to place an order. And so one assumption that you can take is I'm assuming at least fifty percent drop in the flow. That's fairly fine. You can obviously assume that. So if you're assuming forty eight thousand uh, is, is the maximum, um, uh, uh, sorry, twelve thousand is one hour is what you're earning. So if you're earning twelve thousand in, in one hour in the highest in the maximum flow period, you can assume that I'm earning at least fifty percent in the low flow period. So you can say that six thousand is what I would be earning per per hour, and uh, that makes two hours, so twelve thousand in one low period and the other twelve thousand, so total twenty four thousand in the other low period. That's one thing you can take, which is fairly reasonable. But uh, you can also try to um, be more uh, reasonable and show some, um, take more assumptions. For example, you might say that yes, uh, it's taking uh, three minutes to me for me to place an order. But for example, uh, I'm also assuming one thing that whenever I get an order, all my three outlets are busy at one point of time. So that's yes. So three outlets are busy. I'm getting three minutes. So I'm so in three minutes, I'm getting three orders. But for the next set of customers to come, it takes me seven minutes. That's an assumption that I'm taking, right? Obviously, there's no queue that is standing. So once those three people leave, another three people would take seven minutes to come. People might come in the store, the flow is low, right? So that's seven plus three, 10 minutes. So in 10 minutes, I'm getting three orders, okay? Three minutes to place an order, which is three orders, and seven minutes for the next set of customers to come. That's also very reasonable to assume. So in 10 minutes, I'm getting three orders. So in 60 minutes, I'll be getting six into three, which is 18 orders. So in one hour, I'm getting 18 orders. Okay. That's 3,600 rupees. Okay. That's two hour period. So total, I would be getting 7,200 rupees. Okay. Fair enough. Now, another, uh, that's, that's actually first from 10 to 12, I'll be earning 7,200 rupees. You can assume the same thing to happen between four to six. So another seventy-two hundred rupees. That that's it. So I'm earning fourteen thousand four hundred during the low flow period, and I, I was earning uh, ninety-six thousand during the high. Week. So on an average, I'm earning around one point one lakh per day from the Burger King outlet. That's one way to go about it. That's that that's. Uh, or the explanation that I give. Obviously, now it depends. Uh, the low flow period I've taken seven minutes because it made my calculation very easy. If I took seven minutes, seven plus three minutes, ten minutes, right? So ten minutes, uh, I'm taking three orders, and there are six, uh, ten minutes in a sixty minutes, so eighteen orders in the low period, right? So obviously, it depends. Uh, now you can break it down. You now people can actually break it down into three different uh, windows. For example, low flow, medium flow, and high flow. Low flow would be obviously 10 to 12. Medium flow can be between, um, let's say 12 to 2 and 2 to 4 might be a very high flow. Another 4 to 6 could be a low flow. 6 to 8 can be a medium flow. And then 10 to 12 would be, a, uh, sorry, 8 to 10 would be a high flow. Then you can take another reasonable assumption that, okay, 3 minutes is taking. If 7 minutes is the time between the next set of customers in the low flow, probably 3 minutes is the time between in the medium flow for the next set of customers. And high flow, I'm assuming it's long queue. So it's zero minutes uh, for the next set of customers. This is uh, uh, this is one such uh, example. This is the method that I used. Again, I used my best case to find out how much a typical customer spends in BK. I divided the day into multiple brackets depending on the demand. And then I calculated each bracket and then eventually 
multiply them. So this uh, bottom-up method is what I used. Obviously, um, uh, you can use any method you want. If you have a solution to this, please do mention uh, your solution. I would love to read that. Also, I would come up with the, the other example of guesstimates. Uh, I hope um, this uh, made something, at least gave you some idea on how to approach, uh, 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 you know, a guesstimate type of question. Uh, as said, you know, there's no one right or wrong approach. People might have a different approach. If you have a different approach, please do mention. Uh, I'll try to come up with other examples and would, um, you know, upload those videos soon. I hope uh, it helped you. Uh, see you again. Thank you.